Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Sky Vaults. Today we're going to pick up where we left off. Running a raw vault so we can grab some copper and some leaves so we can finally complete this quest. No sense in waiting, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. And first room is exactly what we need. Grab our shears and we can go ahead and get our leaves. Alright. See if we can get some copper. Ooh, it's compressed blocks here. Definitely should pick those up whenever you can. These are worth a bunch of blocks, so these are very helpful. Especially when those blocks come up in the altar. Oh, and there's some copper. I'm gonna pillage as many supplies as we can from this vault before we just leave. Just because we don't want to. I don't want to waste it. Old compressed dirt, ancient debris. Redstone, and we'll go ahead and mine out some of this uh, vault stone as well. Ouch. There's some more iron and diamond. And emerald. Diamond, iron, more coal. Alright, let's get out of here. Not of the vault. We definitely want to loot as much as we can. Villager rune. Awesome. Anything useful? Cacti. And sand. Alright. It's over here. Is that flax? Yeah, it is. Anything below? It'd be great if we could find some more diamonds. Iron. Redstone. Iron. No diamonds. Ooh. An enigma chest. Alright. If we got enough time for one more room, and then we can get out of here. And it's another resource room. Awesome. Anything in the walls? There's diamond. Yes. Iron and copper and gold. Diamond. Mmm, compressed stone. Alright. Now we head east and we exit. I think our next skill point is definitely going to dash. Need some maneuverability. We're exiting a little bit early. That's okay. This is actually pretty successful. Alright, and as the quest book says, we can just yeet these items out of our inventory. However, you'll notice that that needs dirt, and all I have is coarse dirt. There's this cool thing you can do with most modded packs, and even in Vault Hunters, where if you hoe a coarse dirt, it turns into a regular dirt. You mind that? It completes our vault altar. And if we push this button on top, we complete our first vault crystal. Next quest is better enchanting. In Vault Hunters, enchantments are a bit different than in vanilla Minecraft. Protection and offensive enchantments have been disabled in order to allow higher scaling of defensive and offensive attributes down the line. There are, however, some enchantments that work both on vanilla tools and gear, as well as vault tools and gear. The Vault Enchanter is your go-to table for enchanting any gear or tools. It will always be offer the max available enchantment for the cost of some emeralds and XP. Craft one and try to put any enchantable item in it. And our goal is to acquire a vault enchanter. Which is why I picked this guy up. Because if we look up the recipe for the vault enchanter, you can see that it requires an enchanting table. Yay for planning ahead. Anyway, let's grab together those materials. There's two emeralds, a book, and two blocks of chromatic iron. And we have a vault enchanter which we'll just go ahead and throw here for now. Uh, and just to show you how to use this really quick, it's very simple and intuitive. If you have emeralds in your inventory, which I do, I have these 20 here, you know, activate the vault enchanter, put your item in, and you can enchant it. 
plain and simple. Like I can give this efficiency, fortune, uh, mending, and unbreaking. And now that is fully enchanted. And only to the cost of 20 emeralds and 4 levels. And our next quest is better health potions. Vault potions are an out of combat alternative to the healing abilities. They are the only type of potion that doesn't anchor Valar inside the vaults. Vault potions have a set amount of charges to be used each vault, completely refilling itself once you have exited a vault. Starting out you have access to the vile tier of potions. Later in your adventure you will have the possibility to research better tiers, granting you bigger heals with each charge. When crafting your first potion, you get to make the choice between three different recharge mechanics. Slaughter, which recharges your vial when killing a certain amount of mobs, Goblin, which recharges your vial when looting a certain amount of chests, or Pacifist, which recharges your vial passively over time. Don't worry though, you can craft them all and see which fits you the best, but you can only ever use one per vault. Our goal is to craft a vial. If we look in JEI and look for the vial, we can see that there are three different types, Pacifist, Slaughterers, and Goblins. The Pacifist requires a Poppy, the Goblins requires a Bamboo, and the Slaughterers requires a red mushroom. Unfortunately, I have not collected any bamboo or poppies, poppies, but I have collected a red mushroom and some sand, which I've smelted into glass. So I can make glass bottles and I can now craft a vial. Yeah. After that, we have vault hunting. Using your completed vault crystal on your portal will open a vault that is quite different from the raw vaults you may be used to by this time. Notably, the loot is incredibly more diverse and useful, so make sure to check every chest and start collecting everything you can. Completing this gives us a sword and a shield, which I will definitely take. We'll go ahead and identify those now, too. We now have a new sword, and we have a shield, which we'll put on in a minute. And our next quest is looting! Looting in vaults is fun, and there are a lot of exciting things to find. Gear stats like item quantity increase the amount of loot you find, while item rarity makes you find higher tier loot. In addition to chests having loot, killing mobs will yield soul shards, which can be used to purchase rare items in the black market. However, all of this loot can quickly become overwhelming, and any good hunter needs good loot organization. Shulker boxes can go a long way in the beginning, and their shells can be found inside wooden chests. However, a pouch is a much better and more reliable way to collect your loot. The first pouch of your journey is on us, but we do recommend crafting more as you progress. Bigger pouches, belts, and backpacks can later be researched for knowledge. Pouches can be upgraded with upgrade cards to make them carry more loot, automatically pick up loot when you break a chest, void excess loot, and even feed you. The pouch itself can also be configured with a filter or left empty to fit any items. To configure a filter, open your pouch and browse to the backpack settings tab inside it. The slot memory settings tab allows you to set a filter for your pouch to either whitelist or blacklist certain content to go inside it. These filters can also be saved and reapplied to other pouches later on. We recommend you play around with these settings until you understand the system. Completing this quest will reward you with two basic upgrades, which can both be installed in your pouch. The pickup upgrade, which will make the pouch automatically pick up items from the floor when a chest is broken or items are thrown out of it. The void upgrade, which can be configured to void, delete, any excess items that can't fit in your pouch. Voiding items may sound weird, but can be extremely useful to improve your early game looting. These are expensive to craft, however, so use the one from this quest wisely. Soul shards, the items dropped for mobs, are better to store in a shard pouch. The shard pouch can only store soul shards, but an infinite amount of them as long as it is in your inventory. It can also be left in your inventory while purchasing things from the black market without you having to manually count soul shards. It is a must-have for any hunter, and our goal is to craft a shard pouch which is actually going to be a little difficult. If we look at the recipe, we need five purple wool, which is one of the reasons I've been trying to collect string from the raw vaults, just haven't been getting very lucky. We only have nine, which means we can make two pieces of wool. I guess we need to just run this regular vault and see if we can collect some wool inside of it. There are a few POIs that have it. So let's go ahead and run this and grab some random blocks and our shulker. Go ahead and leave our ax here for now. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this vault. Since this is our first vault, uh, just to speak on it a little bit, these work very different from Raw Vault. As the quest book said, there will be better and more diverse loot inside the chests in this vault. The POIs are a little bit better protected. Other than that, it works the exact same way. However, you'll notice at the top of my screen, there is now an elixir bar to complete this vault, which we definitely want to try to do. We need to fill that elixir bar up by doing exactly what it says, and gathering it from loot, ores, and mobs. I'll show you what I mean in a second. 
As you saw those little purple orbs that came from that skeleton, that is elixir. And you can see our bar has increased at the top of the screen. As you saw just now, opening this wooden chest also gave us some elixir, but not nearly as much as that skeleton did. Each different chest type or mob type has a different amount of elixir that it will bestow on us. I'm gonna be really careful in this theme because of the creepers. Ugh! I forgot about that. Oh, that's a champion. Crap. Champions are much more tanky mobs. They hit hard and have a lot more health than normal mobs. They can also bestow effects on themselves, the player, or the hostile mobs around it. For example, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this one is giving itself fury, which increases its damage even more. Champions can definitely be scary. Like I said, these are much better protected. The fact that I also missed that MLG earlier did not help. Oh, and that's another champion. Well, this decision sucks a lot. I'm going to just go ahead and spawn in the entire room, apparently. I forgot how stressful low-level vaults can be. I know there's a skeleton down here somewhere. But I do not know where. Found it. A horde of skeletons, apparently. Ooh. Ores. This is an awesome find. It'll mostly be Laramar, but Laramar is still insanely useful. Loot some of the chests while I missed while I was running around like a crazy man. And then we'll move on to the next room. Oh. And I almost let that despawn. That would have been bad. Actually... I can go ahead and identify that and equip it. And we continue. Oh, this room is interesting. This is the factory room and it contains a bunch of blocks inside these little nooks. Some of them, like you can see right there, are compressed blocks, which are very useful Yeah, probably worth it. To grab whatever compressed blocks we can from here. Up in the buckets in the corners of the room, there are actually mob spawners. Compressed snow, which I'm not going to be able to get. I do not have a shovel. I think that's it. Definitely don't want to spend too much time in rooms like that. At least for now. Ah, and there's some wool. Definitely want to grab that wall. And we're getting way too full. Though, do have shulker shells. So, you know what we can do is make a couple of chests and we have more shulker boxes. Log. And now we have a bunch more space. And we can keep on looting. Stupid freaking dweller knocked me down. That's a creeper. And we have filled up our elixir. So, in an effort to not waste as much of the vault as we can, we will keep on looting and then we will come back and activate that lodestone. Pretty sure you've seen a lodestone a couple times already, but you might not have realized what they were at the time. I'm in a vault on my Vault Hunters Creative World, and behind me you can see the floating purple crystal. These are called lodestones, and when you've gained enough elixir, you can consume or activate this to complete the vault. When on a server and in a co-op vault, you cannot consume the same crystal as other players. You have to each find your own. Thankfully, we're not in a co-op vault, so once we find one, we're golden. Right there. And there's a lodestone in this room. Uh, I hate champion creepers. Absolutely hate them. Awesome. More innates. 
be awesome if we could find a magnet. Uh, apparently not going to happen today, which is fine, I suppose. Oh, you give us another chance, and that is a champion skeleton. Crap. Oh, that was an epic. That is an epic chest plate. Heck yeah, bud. And we'll put the ghost goat chest plate on. We look absolutely ridiculous, but at least we're getting some stats. That was a baby. I freaking hate babies. I'm not overly worried about the coins here, but I would like... And there we go. Vault completed. What the heck? What is going on there? And we completed the vault and got several levels. Went from one all the way to seven. Yeah. We'll see what that holds in a minute. But let me put this stuff up first. Okay, pretty much put away. So let's go ahead and open this crate and see what we got. We'll get into what all this stuff does eventually, but for now, I'll put this stuff up and come back to show you the most important parts of what we found. First off, we've got relic booster packs and unidentified relic fragments. Uh, these are really important because you can use them to collect relic pieces. This relic piece can be combined with four others of the set, the dragon relic, to make a full relic, which grants you an extra 30 seconds in the vault. At least for now. There is some talk about reworking relics, but that is for the future. An unidentified relic fragment always contains a relic. However, relic booster packs have a chance to have a... And that's why I made the bed. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted, relic booster packs have a chance of having a relic fragment inside. So if we open them up, it's likely that we won't get any, but it's just as likely that we will get some. nine booster packs and no relic fragments. Kind of typical. The other thing is this mystery box. This mystery box will always give you something, but it has a low chance of giving you vault gems, namely Echo, I think, and Laramar. I might be mistaken on that. The only way to tell is to go look at the configs or ask in Discord or Reddit. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we get. And we got diamonds. Bog. The other thing we got is gear. We got several pieces of unidentified vault gear that we'll go ahead and identify now. Nice. Those yellow pieces of gear are actually rare transmogs, which are typically a little bit better. As you can see, they give more prefixes and suffixes. Prefixes and suffixes are just a way to modify gear to get better and more niched abilities and setups. We won't get too deep into that now, but just to mention, getting higher rarity gear is always better than getting lower rarity gear. I hope that would be obvious. You can also see that we got two axes. One of them is a rare axe and the other is a scrappy axe. We also got a rare sword, which I'll probably start using. I'm not a very big fan of axes in general. They have their uses. For now though, we'll go ahead and store this unused gear in here and then we'll enchant all of these up and we'll actually start using this sword and this gear. If you didn't know, uh, you can actually hold the shift key to compare any piece of gear to the one you currently have equipped. As for our unspent skill and expertise points, like I said earlier, I'm going to put one in dash for sure. Maneuvering around the vaults has become very important. I will go ahead and put one point in strength and the other four into speed. Just so we're a little quicker around the vaults. For the expertise point, I'll go ahead and put it in fortunate. Fortunate gives me passive fortune levels that are applied whenever I use a fortune tool to break blocks. So instead of having fortune three, this diamond pickaxe will have fortune four now. Now to continue on with the quests, we need these five wool and... Well, shoot. To continue on with the quest, we actually need to go into another vault. Unfortunately, we need red dye to make purple dye, which we have the blue dye from Lapis, but we need red dye, and that is a little harder to make. Is that of things we haven't found yet? 
found it. So, I suppose we need to go into another raw vault. See if we can collect some red dye. Yep, not getting in this vault. Oh well. Didn't find red dye, so... Dang it. Yes! Finally. Not exactly amazing, but that will definitely get us our red dye. Oh. And here's some beetroot. Which means that I will be able to have a reproducible source of red dye. Hog. And I think we're just going to exit now. Alright. Like the recipe for the shard pouch says, we need purple wool. Which means we need purple dye. Which means we need red and blue. We got some red tulips in that vault. So we can just turn those into red dye. Turn this lapis into blue dye. Combine them to make purple. And now we have purple wool. And now we should be able to make our shard pouch. Finally. We can take our shard pouch. And throw all of these soul shards in there. And that can just rest in there for now. And from this quest we get a pouch. Pickup upgrade and void upgrade, which will definitely come in handy and we'll sort it out later. Our next quest is the Bounty Hunter. Completing bounties is a great way to secure yourself some extra loot and give yourself a solid goal to work toward. You will first need to craft yourself a bounty table and then interact with it by right clicking it. Our goal is to simply craft a bounty table, which actually isn't all that expensive. Loom. Bounty table. We'll put this there for now. Our next quest is Bounties and Rewards. Inside the Bounty table, you can select a bounty by clicking on one of the available bounties and clicking Activate. Once you complete a bounty, then you can go back to the table and collect your reward. And our goal is to simply complete a bounty. This is really good. Complete any vault to get Benny, Chromatic Steel. We're going to go ahead and activate this one. And these bounty pearls that we've been collecting in the vault can actually be used in side the bounty table to re-roll any bounty. For instance, if we didn't want to do this completion, we could click this to re-roll it. And now it is an item submission to submit five ancient debris. Probably won't be doing that one anytime soon. And into another vault we go. And away we go. I really don't like winter themes. Oh, but this is a special room. Uh, this is a village room. This is a dusk one, so it is ornate. If we can find the way down. Like this. There is a stronghold-ish kind of thing underneath the village. Uh, if we go down here, you can see there are a boatload of ornate chests. I don't think that I can actually break the spawners yet. No, I can't. So, basically just have to try to be as quick and efficient as possible. This is both an awesome and unfortunate thing that we've discovered down here, especially since it's our first room. If I could break the spawners, it'd be so much better. Loadstone. And these are living chests. These are very important for progression. These contain the essence we need to gain knowledge points to unlock mods. Because in Vault Hunters, mods are locked behind research.
We've already completed our elixir in the second room. That's awesome. Always take ores. And we continue. Definitely not taking this bad boy on, but this one is a really awesome challenge room. All the coins and all the mobs. Definitely not something we can take on right now. Uh, let's see if we can get some sneaky compressed blocks. I don't know where the noises are coming from, but I hear mobs dropping and it scares me. Hey, how you doing, buddy? was a very dumb thing to do at this early uh, of a stage in the game. <laughs> I do not have the armor for that. I don't have the gear for that. I don't have the skills for that. should not be doing stuff like that. Yet. There's a lodestone. That's awesome. Convenient. Alright, we'll probably finish looting this side, the top of the vault, and then exit. We're just gonna go ahead. Complete. And there's our bounty. And. Another two levels. Yeah. Uh, put this stuff up and be back to show you what we got. All right. We completed our bounty, so we can go ahead and just claim reward. When you claim reward, you actually get a bounty crate, and the XP is automatically given to you. You can see we're really close to nine. Let's go ahead and select our next bounty, which we probably won't be doing that anytime soon. But we can go ahead and do this. We'll open up these crates by shift, right clicking. And that's a lot of stuff. I'll be right back with the important bits. This one isn't overly important, but I just wanted to point out this thing I have in my hand. This is called an augment. If you apply it to a vault crystal, it will apply that theme to that crystal. It's very important later on when you start getting void augments. There's another one called a blood moon augment that's important. We'll get into those later on when we finally cross that bridge. But I just figured I'd share with that I got one and what it was. Anyway, just like last time, start with our relics. Oh, we actually got three this time. And two from the same set. Log. Our mystery box contains more diamonds. And we'll go ahead and identify our gear. see if anything we got is better than what we have. I uh, don't believe that is. Uh, that definitely is a bit better. That is better than the leggings we have. And while the thorns damage would be nice, I like the health that we have. And now we can complete this quest and move on to the tool station. And I think we will get into the tool station next time. I think that's going to do it for this episode. We've gotten a lot done. Not as much as I'd like to, but is what it is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Sky Vaults. Hope I see you next time. Until then, bye.